Struggling to find a beginner-friendly crochet pine cone pattern? Follow these easy steps to make pine cones in three unique shapes and sizes. Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today I'm showing you how to crochet these adorable pine cones, perfect for fall decor, holiday wreaths, or even a woodland-themed project. They're super easy to make, and I'll guide you through each step. In this super easy tutorial for beginners, I'm gonna be showing you how to make three different shapes or three different styles of pine cones, and also three different sizes. So you can make each of these different shapes into three different sizes. This is just from changing your crochet hook size. So you can do small, that is a four millimeter. Medium is a five millimeter and the large is a six millimeter. So you're gonna need yarn, two colors, so one for your pine cone and one for your stem. I'm using a size four worsted weight acrylic for mine. So just any regular acrylic yarn and is in as many shades as you have that you like. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a five millimeter crochet hook. You will also need four stitch markers, a needle for sewing in your ends, and a pair of scissors. Here are the timestamps. You can jump back into where you left off and let's get started. We're gonna start by making the small one. To start, we're just gonna be making a slip knot any which way you normally do. And you wanna leave about a four inch tail. So just make a slip knot, shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. We're going to chain 30. One, two, three. If you'd like to follow along with the written pattern, all of my patterns are available on my website, secretyarnery.com, and all of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I was sitting there right beside you. 29 and 30. Now just lay that out pretty little V's facing up and we're gonna pop in our stitch markers. So starting at the side where our hook is, we don't count what's on our hook, we're just gonna count these pretty little V's after and we're gonna count to five. So there is one, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna pop a stitch marker right there. And we're gonna do that again. So one, two, three, four, and five. We're gonna pop a stitch marker right there. And then at the other side, we're gonna count five back. So one, two, three, four, and five right there. So pop a stitch marker into that stitch or into that chain. So this is how we're gonna be doing our small pine cone. And then we wanna be working in to the top loop of our chain. So we're just gonna be working right into these top loops right there. So into the second top loop, that's where we're gonna start right here. So skipping a chain and working into the second. We're gonna do four single crochets into that same chain. So into the same spot, four single crochets. And we're gonna do that into each chain, including the one with the stitch marker. So four single crochets into each chain up to and including the stitch marker. So you can pause the video and just keep working along. Four single crochets into each chain, just popping them into that top loop, just like that. And now the one with the stitch marker is the last one that gets single crochets. So four single crochets into the same chain as the stitch marker. You can pop that stitch marker out and now into each of the next five chains, the same top loop we're working into, we're gonna be doing half double crochets. So four half double crochets into each chain, all the way up to and including the stitch marker. If I'm going too fast, you can slow me down or speed me up or pause the video. You can just hit that gear on the video right now and speed me up or slow me down. And then into that same chain as the stitch marker, we're doing our last four half double crochets. And you can pop that stitch marker out if it's in your way. OK, 
There we go. And now we're going to be doing the same thing, but four double crochets into each chain all the way along, and we're not working in to the one with a stitch marker. So all the way along until we reach the stitch marker. So wrap your yarn, four double crochets into each chain. There's one, two, three, and four. And we're going to do that into each chain all the way along. So pause the video, four double crochets into each chain, and I'll meet you when you get closer to that stitch marker. So that's what mine looks like when I get up to that stitch marker. Don't worry about how it's all twisted around. We'll finish that or work on that when we are finished. So now you can pop that last stitch marker out and into the remaining five chains. We're going to be doing four half double crochets in to each. So just sliding your hook in and four half double crochets into each chain all the way along until we're finished this row. So you can pause the video and get your four half double crochets done. I'll meet you when you get right there to the end. There we have it. We are finished. We've worked into every chain going all the way along. So now we can cut your tail. We want to leave about 12 inches because we're going to be using this to hold our pine cone together. And then just chain one and pull that tail through. So that secures all of your stitches. And now go back to the tail the end of it where we began and you can see it's nice and twisted around there looks super cute so just keep kind of unfolding it and lining it up as you go along just unfolding those curls don't worry about how it looks or how it lines up we can still adjust all of that later just push those big wrinkles out of the way so that you have circles going all the way around so that's the first step. Now you can look at it and you can customize it. So if you twist it more, you'll get a skinnier pine cone like that. And if you open it up, you'll get a fatter pine cone. So this is another way you can customize each of your pine cones so that they look a little bit unique. You could also twist that center bit to make it a little more pointy if you like, just depending on what you want your pine cones to look like. Now we take our tail and we want to thread this onto our needle. I like using sharp tip needles for this. They are linked in the description box down below. But if you have a blunt tip, you of course could use that. Sharp tips just work into the fibers, so it's a much more secure uh, finish. I'm going to twist that up a little bit. There we go. Now, right where our yarn finished, so just make sure it, it tapers a little bit in at the top, like a natural pine cone. And then wherever it lands, just go into that row underneath to secure that tip or the end of our work, and then slowly stitch it back so your yarn ends near the middle. It doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, just closer to the center of that circle. Just like that is fine. Now get it looking cute again, how we like it to look. And then just pop your needle right down the center. We are going to push it out so we can scrunch up all those layers push them down so our needle can come out the bottom. Doesn't matter exactly where, we just want to be able to get the needle out of the bottom of our pine cone. And we don't want to pull it too snug yet. And now we're going to go right back up in a slightly different spot. So pick a different spot and go right back up. Now we can come out a little bit on one side. Doesn't have to be smack dab in the middle. But if it is, it's fine. And get that needle out. Before you pull your yarn, massage it so that all those rows are how you had how you like them. Now we can tie these together to secure them. So our tails are going to be super secure. Don't pull it too snug right now. We just want it flat. The second time you can pull it a little more tight. But the third time is when you can really pull it. So now, especially because we're using acrylic yarn, you can really pull it nice and snug. 
if you are using a natural fiber, be careful on making that knot because your fibers can snap. And we don't want that. Now we can just sew in this tail. And now we're ready to add the stem. Now grab a slightly different color yarn to make your stem. And we're gonna leave a longer tail, maybe about 10 inches on each side, so we can go back down into our pine cone. So to make your stem, just make a slip knot any which way you normally do. Shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. And you can chain either three or four. So for my pine cones, I like to do a little bit of variety. So sometimes I will chain three, and sometimes I will chain four. It doesn't matter. It just makes them a little bit different. Now it's a little bit hard to see these back loops with this darker color yarn. So I'm just gonna be using this lighter color to show you so you can see it. So there is my chain three or chain four. Just roll that to the side so we can see these back loops. The first back loop is right underneath the working yarn and we wanna work in to the second and third back loop. So into the second back loop, just slide it onto your hook with your finger and make one slip stitch. Now slide the next back loop onto your hook and slip stitch. Turn your work or rotate it a bit so you have both of your tails up top. And we're gonna slip stitch with both strands to finish off. And cut your tail. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug those down to secure. And then there are your stems. This is a chain four and this is a chain three. So you can see it's just a little bit bigger. So I just make a mix of these depending on which stem I want to put onto which pine cone. And there is a darker one to go with my pine cone. And then I just vary the color I'm doing for the stem so it's different from the body of the pine cone. So thread one of those tails onto your yarn needle and go right back down the center because we want our stem to be coming out of the center of our pine cone. Go all the way down, or almost all the way down. It doesn't have to go through the very tip of your pine cone. So I'm just doing the one strand right now. So it came out from that side. I'm just gonna put it one stitch over the same area, right back up. And I want it coming out quite close to where my stem is. See, it came out right there. And then I'll massage it back down. We don't want that one making it tight. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the second tail. And then before you pull that one through, just make sure that it hasn't shrunken too much or gotten too short. And then just delicately pull that guy up. These two tails, we can knot them gently at first. And then a little more. Depending what you're doing with your pine cones, you could just cut those off right now, or you could sew them back down inside because we've already knotted them and secured it. Now our pine cone is quite firm, quite dense. It doesn't really come apart anywhere. So there is your super cute first pine cone. You can make a whole bunch and your shape will get better each time that you practice it, each time you try. And now I will show you how to make the other two sizes. To make the tall pine cone, we are gonna start with a chain 40. So same way as we did before, chain 40. So there is my chain 40. Grab your stitch markers. Starting with where our hook is, we don't count what's on our hook, but we're gonna put a stitch marker into the fifth chain. So one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna pop a stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna pop a stitch marker. And now starting on the other end, we're gonna count back five. So one, two, three, four, five. We just pop a stitch marker right into that stitch. So now we're gonna do the same thing, four single crochets into each chain, four half double crochets into each chain, four double crochets into each chain, 
and four half double crochets into the last section. So into the second chain, four single crochets, two, three, and four. And now four single crochets into each of the next three chains, including the one with the stitch marker. You can pop that stitch marker out. Into the next set of chains, we're gonna be doing four half double crochets. So into each chain, four half double crochets. And into the chain with the stitch marker, the same four half double crochets. Pop that stitch marker out and into each of these chains or each of the next chains in this section for double crochets. Four double crochets into each chain. So mine looks like that when I get close to that stitch marker. So into the stitch with the stitch marker, you can pop that out now. We're gonna do four half double crochets into each of those last chains. So four half double crochets into each chain to finish off our tall pine cone. So there is my four half doubles into those last chains. And chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your yarn, leaving a long enough tail to sew up and down your pine cone. Pull your hook up and the, your yarn through. Snug that down to secure. And now just assemble it the same as we did before. So just turning all of those layers so the circles line up. So there is the tall one and you would just be threading your needle and assembling it the same way as we did for the small size. And now I'm gonna show you how to do the fat one. To start the fat pine cone, leave about a six inch tail, make a slip knot and chain 35. So there is my chain 35. This is when we need our four stitch markers. So you can count back from your hook, not including what's on your hook. We can count one, two, three, four, and five, and pop a stitch marker. One, two, three, four, five. Pop a second stitch marker. One, two, three, four, and five. Pop a third stitch marker. And then from the top, we're gonna to count back five. One, two, three, four, five. And then count back five again. One, two, three, four, and five. So we're gonna be making our fat pine cone the exact same way as the others starting with four single crochets, four half double crochets, four double crochets, and then into each chain here in our middle section, five treble crochets into each of these chains, then four double crochets, and then four half double crochets to finish. The same as the others, we're gonna start into that second chain with our four single crochets. and four single crochets into each of the chains, including the one with the stitch marker. You can pop that stitch marker out and into the next set of stitches or the next set of chains, we're gonna do half double crochets. So four half double crochets into each of the chains in the next section. Into each of the chains in the next section, four double crochets into each chain. Into each of the chains in the next section, we are gonna be doing five triple crochets into each. So wrapping your yarn twice and going into that chain, we're gonna make five treble crochets into each chain. So this is what is new for the fat one. 
So there's my first one, my second, third, fourth, and fifth. So it's a lot of stitches into each of those chains, five triple crochets. You can pause the video, keep working along, five triple crochets into each chain, and I'll meet you when we get to the next stitch marker. Now when we get to our next stitch marker, this is where we're gonna be starting our next stitches because we counted back from the end of our chain. Just pop that stitch marker out and into the next set of chains. We're gonna do four double crochets into each. So four double crochets into each chain. And when you get to the next stitch marker, just pop that out and into each of the last chains, we're gonna do four half double crochets into each. Just like that. Don't worry if it looks all funny. And then chain one to secure your yarn. Leave a tail almost about 18 inches. We're gonna be using this tail to sew our pine cone together. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now find where it stopped being pretty, where it stopped lining up, and just go along and untwist it section by section until all those circles are stacked. To get it looking like a pine cone, you can twist some sections tighter and you can untwist some sections to make them wider. So that's how we are adjusting what our pine cone will be looking like, like that. And now go ahead and finish off this pine cone the same as you did for the others. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial as much as I did. I'm waiting for you in that video up there and stay hooked.